Hello everyone. Uh, today we will be discussing the mathematical concepts related to sampling as discussed in the earlier lecture. So let's start. A continuous time signal which is a sinusoidal signal is given by xt is equal to a cos omega t plus phi. Here t is the continuous time variable whereas phi is the corresponding phase. So in order to work in MATLAB what we have to do is we have to discretize the samples of xt. Since MATLAB works on discrete samples, so this is an important step. So the discretization of the time signals can be obtained by uniformly sampling the continuous time signal. And that can be done by substituting Tn is equal to Nts in the continuous time waveform, which is this. Here Ts is the sampling time. So, in order to show the derivation behind this, what we have now is xt equal to a cos omega t plus phi. Please note here t is the continuous time variable. So, what we have to do is we have to discretize this time variable. And that can be done by substituting t is equal to nts. What this is doing is basically, suppose we have continuous signal here. If we want to discretize this continuous signal into discrete samples, what we have to do is we have to sample this signal at regular intervals. And that sampling of the signal at regular intervals can be done by taking uniform samples of this signal at regular intervals that is 0 ts 2 ts 3 ts and so on so what we obtain after this operation is a discrete sample sequence which we call it as a digital signal here the time sequences are discrete in nature. So, so converting an analog signal into its discrete counterpart by substituting t is equal to nts is what we are explaining in this line. So, the system that performs this operation is called as continuous to discrete converter and what it is doing is it takes a continuous time signal and it applies to a switch that on and off at the rate of time ts which is the sampling rate and what we get at the output is basically the discrete sequence x and ts which is shown over here and the green signal here is passed over this side and this is the this is a system that performs a continuous to discrete sequence operation. So, as stated earlier in this course, since we are using MATLAB to generate the discrete time sequences, so what we are showing here is a simple MATLAB program which is basically generating a discrete time signal. So, what it is showing is that the first three lines are showing that we are clearing the workspace of the MATLAB. It is the time indexing which is running from 0 to 20 that is n is running from 0, 1, 2, till 20. Here we are defining a signal x as 0 0.8 to the power of n. So, as n varies from 0 to 20, we have a vector x having different values. So, this is basically plotting the results of the time signal x with respect to n. So, what we are seeing here in the down slide is the plot corresponding to the MATLAB code we have discussed at the top. Here we can see we are plotting the results where y axis is the x n and x axis is the time index n and you can see that uh, the variable n is running from 0 to 20. So, we have a discrete sequence which is represented by 0 0.8 to the power of n which we are using for our MATLAB program. So, this is just a basic introduction to the MATLAB and how it is used for generating the discrete sequences. So, let us begin the theory of sampling. So, as we have discussed that we have a continuous signal x t where xt is defined by a cos omega t plus phi 
so in order to discrete this sequence in order to make x nt as out of this sequence what we have to do is we have to substitute that small t with the nts so for doing this once we once we plug that t is equal to nts into xt what we obtain is a discrete sequence what we call that is xn and that is equal to a cos omega nts plus phi so what we are calling omega hat as omega ts which we have defined over here so this omega hat is omega ts which is again omega divided by fs radians it is called as discrete prime frequency though the units are radians but we can also state it as radians per sample to emphasize the sampling term is involved again we can represent this expression in terms of its corresponding frequency term by substituting omega as 2 pi f so once we do that we obtain f is f hat is equal to f ts here f is the continuous frequency whereas f hat is discrete frequency in this example what we are doing is we are plotting the discrete counterpart of this signal since we have this signal xt as cos 2 pi 60 t and we are sampling it at rate of 240 and 1000 samples per second so what we are trying to show here is how these discrete time sequences look as compared to its continuous counterpart so as we know we are sampling at the rate of 240 and 1000 the corresponding sampling time is 1 by 240 and 1 by 1000 so here we have a small matlab script which tries to plot xt and its corresponding discrete counterpart with different ts so in one we have a ts equal to 1 by 240 and in another we have a ts equal to 1 by 1000 so as you can see here the first three are just clearing up of the workspace this time sweep is basically generating a continuous time points which are idealizing a continuous signal so once we put the time interval t on in into this we get the continuous signal output on ninth what we are doing is we are selecting a particular rate of 1000 here then we are creating a time sample t running from 0 to 0 0.02 and then we have a samples that are shown from 0 to length t sample minus 1 so this is basically a discrete time sequence corresponding to the analog sequence given over here so when we plot both of them what we observe here is this sequence what we see here is this is a continuous signal xt this is obtained by sampling a continuous signal xt by putting x and ts and here ts is taken as 240 and the corresponding discrete sequence which we obtain from here again by taking ts as 1000 is shown over here so we get two different discrete sequences corresponding to one continuous signal xt for different time samples please note by seeing this expression over here what we observe is we have 60 hertz as the continuous frequency so the corresponding omega continuous is 120 by 120 pi so once we sample it at the different rates of 240 and 1000 hertz we get the discrete discrete frequencies as 0 0.5 pi and 0 0.12 pi so that 0 0.5 pi and 0 0.12 pi are used in calculating this expression which is cos 2 pi 60 divided by rate into n sample so, so the 60 divided by rate into 2 pi is basically the expression that we are writing over here so these two are the corresponding discrete sequences which we obtained through MATLAB so what we are saying here is that cos 0.5 n is the sequence this one and this one corresponds to this it's cos 0.12 pi n so next we discuss the concept of aliasing alias is basically found in oxford dictionary as a noun and is defined as a false or assumed identity a spy operating under alias so what it basically means is let us consider a sequence x1 as 0.4 pi n here the discrete 
frequency is given by 0 0.45. So as we know as cosine is a 2 pi modulus function, so we can write cos 2.4 pi n as cos 2 plus 0.4 pi n. So since the periodicity of 2 pi comes into play, this expression reduces to cos 0.4 pi n. So the cos 0.4 pi n is x1 n, which is actually the same as cos 2.4 pi n. So what we can observe here is that both x2 n and x1 n are same and they are allies of each other. So due to the modulus 2 pi property of cosine, we have aliasing coming into play. So we can generalize the above result to any 2 pi multiples of time. So what we can write over here is that the discrete omega L is equal to omega 0 plus 2 pi L where L runs from 0 to 1, 2, 3 and up to n. So all these cosine frequencies having omega L as their discrete frequencies are identical to omega naught. Also we know that cos theta is cos of minus theta. So what we can have is another signal x3 n let us say that is 1.6 pi n. So by so by writing them as in this form that is 2 pi that is 2 minus 0.4 pi n which is equivalent to cos 2 pi n minus 0.4 pi n and since 2 pi cos 2 pi periodicity is 1 so what we can write is cos minus 0.4 pi n which because of the property that cos theta is cos of minus theta that is the even property of this cosine we get cos 0.4 pi n which is again x1 n. So what we observe from here is that x1 n and x3 n are again aliasing and this is due to the even property of cosine signal. So what we observe here is that the 1.6 pi also gives the same sequence as omega is equal to 0.4 pi. So they are allies, allies with each other. Hence generalizing this again, we obtain this expression which is omega l hat is equal to 2 pi l minus omega naught where l run from 0, 1, 2, 3 up to n. So all the cosines having the omega l as their frequencies will be allies to the omega naught so these results also hold for sine except that the amplitude is inverted because of the odd property of sine signal. So if we put in summary the results that we have got for any integer L, the discrete time frequency omega hat and the corresponding frequencies 2 pi L minus omega naught hat and omega naught plus 2 pi L all produce the same sequences and are allies of each other. And this is basically a more generalized variation of what we have discussed as we are including the phase phi also. You can prove that these two will also be allies of this fundamental signal. One thing to observe here is that in this case where we are discussing uh, the 2 pi l minus omega naught factor, here what we see is the, there is a change in the angle. So the discrete time frequency omega hat expression given in equation 2.6 can be rewritten in terms of the continuous time frequency omega as follows. So what we do is we copy the equation 2.6 here again. Here omega L and omega naught hat are both discrete frequencies. So by substituting the expression omega L as omega LTS where omega L now is the continuous frequency and this is we have derived earlier at the very first slide I can show you as we go back again here you can see right omega hat is omega ts here omega hat is the discrete frequency and omega is the continuous frequency so once we substitute this expression and this expression in the above equation what we get is this this is basically the relation in the corresponding continuous frequency and this expression is correspondingly in discrete frequency. So now the next step is to divide by Ts on both these sides. And what we obtain is omega L is equal to omega naught plus 2 pi L divided by Ts. Which is again written in terms of Fs as omega naught plus 2 pi L Fs. So this expression is continuous frequency expression. Whereas the earlier one which is shown in equation 2.1 is the discrete frequency expression. 
again equation 2.4 can be written in terms of frequency f as fl plus equal to f0 plus lfs and this is obtained by just substituting omega as 2 pi f similarly if you use equation 2.8 which is this one we obtain its second form which is this so these two are the corresponding continuous time frequencies expression for aliasing so this when viewed in continuous time domain means that sampling as signal this with t is equal to nts results in this expression since we are putting t as nts over here so once we get this expression we just substitute the value of fl from equation 2.15 or from equation 2.16 to get their corresponding aliases okay so we have this exercise where three continuous input samples are uh, sampled at the rate of 400 hertz and they are given as follows so what we have to do is we have to find out whether um, x2 x3 are aliases of x1t or not so before going uh, so before going further let's see whether these three signals are allies of each other or what so let's start so for uh, for x1t if we discretize this signal what we will get is x1m which is obtained by cos 2 pi times 60 divided by 400 hertz which is the sampling frequency times n plus pi by 3 so this is basically the discrete version of x1t and this is obtained just by putting t as n t s in a similar way we can write x2 n as cos 2 pi 340 n divided by 400 minus pi by 3 and x3 n as cos 2 pi 460 n divided by 400 plus pi by 3 so we have these three discrete signals x1 n x2 n and x3 n so let's see whether x1 n is going under aliasing or not so as we can see this 400 hertz is our sampling frequency so if we plot the scale here on the horizontal x-axis so what we see is uh, and this is our frequency parameter f so this fs is somewhere here which is 400 hertz and this is 200 hertz which is fs by 2 this 60 is basically lying somewhere here which is in the principal band that is between 0 to fs by 2 so it will not have any aliasing as also you can see that fs has to be twice the maximum frequency content that has is present in the signal here f max is 60 hertz so fs has to be 120 hertz but we, here we have is 400 hertz so it's more than 120 hertz so it will not go any allies in case of x2n here the situation is different here if we plot the horizontal of axis here then we have here is 200 hertz this is 400 hertz so the 340 parameter will lie somewhere in this band so this is more than fs by 2 and 0 so it will definitely have allies and what will that be so we will be using our equation as fl equal to lfs minus f0 as we have discussed in the earlier slides here fl is 340 equal to l times the sampling frequency is 400 minus f0 which implies that f0 is equal to l times 400 minus 340 so what is the minimum value of l that gives you a frequency f0 as an integer so for l is equal to 1 what we get is 60 hertz so this is the signal that we originally started with which is x1 n so what we see is that x2 n aliases back to x1 n so one thing to note here is that x2 n is originally defined as cos 2 pi times 340 n divided by 400 minus pi by 3 so as we have discussed earlier that when we are using uh, this expression it has to go with a change in the phase change in the phase means um, we have minus pi by 3 here so the principal alias will be cos 2 pi 60 n divided by 400 plus pi by 3 so we have changed the value of minus to plus 
Why? Because we are using this expression to get our principal alliance. In the third example, we have x3 and s cross 2 pi 460 and divided by 400 plus pi by 3. Here we can see that if we scale that same frequency parameter, we have it is 0, 200, 400. So in this, in this range, 460 lies somewhere here. So this also gets aliased back to its principal band as in the same case where when we are using this one this also got aliased back to its principal band so in this case what we will be using is our expression as fl is equal to lfs plus f0 where fl is 460 equal to lfs l fs is 400 plus f0 which implies f0 as 460 minus l times 400 which again for L is equal to 1 comes out to be 60 hertz. So this means this frequency also gets mapped to 60 hertz. But this time there is a slight difference and that difference will be notified once we write the expression. So our X3N will now be cos 2 pi 460N divided by 400 plus pi by 3 as we know it. It gets aliased to the frequency which is cos 2 pi 60 divided by 400 but there will be no change in the phase you can see what we have is plus over here and that same will be reflected on this side why since we are using this as our expression that is why there is no change in the value of phase it will remain with the same sign so these are the matlab plot for the three cosine signals we have discussed earlier which is x1n this is x2n and this is x3n and all these plots will have continuous signal in blue and the discrete signal in red. So when we plot each of them one after the other, what we see is that even though the continuous signals are different, the discrete samples are nearly the same as you can see from their plots. What you can see if you look closely, this sample occurs at the same time as this sample which occurs at the same time as this sample. So this clearly shows that after sampling all these three signals which are continuous which are different will have same discrete signal as shown here. So now we have discussed this example in great detail. So I just give this as an exercise for you guys to practice. So uh, uh, the question is you have to comment about these two signals 5 cos 7.3 pi n plus pi by 4 and 5 cos 0 0.7 pi n plus pi by 4. You have to comment on this like whether these two are uh, you have to comment on this like which one of these signals will be aliased and uh, this is your question do let me know in the comment section whether you are able to solve it or not in case if you don't let me know so that I can solve it in our next lecture thank you so much for watching see you next time bye